Hi, I'm Lana from AWS, and welcome to This Is My Architecture. Today we're talking to Corey from Datadog. Hi. Welcome, Corey. Hi, Lana. Awesome having you here. Would you mind telling us a little bit more about Datadog? So Datadog is an application and infrastructure monitoring tool. Uh, we help developers gain insight into what their applications are doing day to day. I would imagine that you run at a pretty large scale. We do. And uh, how are you using Kubernetes to achieve that? So in the last year, we've migrated to Kubernetes uh, in Amazon, and we run our own Kubernetes clusters. Uh, and what we found throughout this journey is that Kubernetes has some limitations of scale. Uh, and most of the time, we were just launching new clusters to, to help us achieve that and to grow our application. Uh, but in reality, what we've found is that that's a lot of overhead, and we wanted to make that a little bit easier. And Kubernetes is actually really good at scaling. And so what we found is we've now are scaling our Kubernetes clusters with Kubernetes. And so what we have is a, a thing we call our meta cluster. And what this does is this launches each of these clusters uh, and runs the control plane for us. It is makes life much easier, and it gives us the ability to scale up Kubernetes very quickly uh, based on our application and developer needs. So I would we would say that this is a control plane for running your meta clusters. Our meta cluster helps us run each of our individual Kubernetes clusters. These are logical units. Gotcha. Uh, when you're first starting your Kubernetes journey, you usually have just this. Mm -hmm. And so now, as we scale out to dozens of these, uh, we needed a way to make it a little more manageable. When you're running different node groups that I'm seeing here, are you running this within the same AZ or multiple AZs? So we have created this concept of a node group. Uh, and these are abstractions of an ASG, an auto scale group, on top of Amazon. So if this is application one, and this is application two, each of these scales horizontally across AZs uh, if, if we choose. Uh, doesn't always tend to be the case, though. Uh, certain applications and certain clusters, sometimes we will run a cluster zonally. Uh, we will put a logical unit. And some of that is as your applications grow beyond a certain limit, uh, you, and you still want to grow beyond that, uh, what Kubernetes can handle, you have to have it in multiple Kubernetes clusters. And so what we will do is we will put a cluster in each zone. Uh, but you have to architect your application to be able to withstand that and to, to deal with like your deployments and whatnot. So it is it does add complexity to the process. When you're making the decision and when to add another logical group, so you know at what point you say, hey, you know what? It's time for me to add another uh, Kate's logical group to my meta cluster. Usually it's a it's a hard limit that we end up hitting in Kubernetes. Uh, they recently went from 2,500 nodes to 5,000, uh, and they are looking to increase that even more. Uh, but that is because it puts load on the control panel and or the control pane. Mm -hmm. And so as we as we scale out, it really does depend on how your applications are configured, how many uh, application groups you have, what your namespaces look like within the Kubernetes cluster. And so we do quite a bit of monitoring of Kubernetes, uh, which is why we use it. And what we've found is we, we, it is really highly dependent on the workloads within the clusters to decide when are you comfortable going to another cluster or how much further can you stretch a cluster. OK, so I'm also seeing here load balancing, so in particular ELBs. Would you mind telling me a little bit more about how you're using that? Sure, so we use a lot of different technologies on top of Amazon for load balancing. Uh, but the general gist here is that we want to make life easy for our developers, and we want to take advantage of the technology that Amazon is providing. Uh, and so what our c clusters do and what the configuration does is it, it keeps track of which nodes are joined to a specific load balancer. Uh, and so it, it stores this state. And it will, div you know, between the AZs, you know, if there are three AZs within each one of these applications, it'll load tra or it'll distribute traffic amongst the nodes for us. It's a, uh, you know, we get to kind of take advantage of load balancing on top of Amazon without really having to change anything or make things more complicated than they need to be. Makes sense. And each one of them is targeting an ASG. Uh, yes. Just to correct. scale it out. Got it. One last question I wanted to ask is about statefulness. I think a lot of us are curious how to run stateful workloads on Kubernetes. Sure. So we run a lot of stateful applications on top of Kubernetes. About 80% of our fleet stores some type of state. Uh, we're heavy users of both uh, local disks and network disks. Uh, what we ended up doing in our node group uh, which is a CRD that we've created and will likely open source this year, is we track state on a node uh, and, and we keep that node and, or that state along with the application as it continues to evolve. Uh, we like to, despite moving to containers and being fairly immutable, uh, we do like to do some type of mutability here and there. Uh, we don't like to always have to rebuild that state, so it'll stay with that application. Uh, and we will use 
taints on the specific node, and that'll track through a deployment or as, as the application evolves over time. This has been really great. Corey, thank you so much for telling us more about how you're using and scaling uh, Kubernetes sure. on AWS. And thank you for watching. This is Marketecture.